Recently, I rented the Canon RF 85mm 1.2 L lens. I was really excited to try out this RF lens from Canon. I'll just tell you right off the bat that what you need to know about this lens is it's really big, it's really heavy, and it's really expensive. Hi everybody, for those of you who are new here, my name is Zach, I'm a photographer and arts administrator based in Santa Barbara, California. And in this video, we're talking all about the RF 85mm 1.2. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my experience using this lens. We're gonna see lots of example images, and we're gonna end with some general thoughts of mine on the RF lens lineup. So I'll just hit you with it. This lens costs about 2,700 US dollars. That's almost $3,000 for this prime lens. That's even more than the EOS R6 itself. It is quite a pricey lens. It's also really, really big and really heavy. It weighs about 2.6 pounds and it's four inches by five inches. It's a massive lens. It has a filter thread of 82 millimeters. It's probably the biggest, heaviest, most expensive lens I've ever put on my camera. And yes, it creates beautiful images. I was able to test this lens in a variety of situations such as event photography for Opera Santa Barbara, as well as a portrait studio session with my good friend, Taja. She and I have worked together on countless shoots over the past four years. I am so happy with the images we were able to capture in our photo shoot. Luis Chavez was there to document the BTS of the photo shoot. So thank you, Luis, for the amazing BTS footage. So in the studio, I was shooting with several cameras, the R6, the R, the X-Pro3, even the Canon AE-1 film camera, and a variety of lenses as well. So I'll be showing you some examples from other cameras. I did get some incredible results with the 85 millimeter, but I got just as amazing results with my trusty EF 50 millimeter 1.2. We'll talk a little bit about the differences between RF and EF at the end of this video. So yes, the downsides are the size, the weight, and the price, but what are some of the good things about this lens? Well, the build quality is really premium. It looks good. It has a really solid construction. It's weather sealed. It's just well built as expected of a Canon L lens of this price. I said recently in a video about the Canon RF 50mm 1.2 that that lens, although it's quite big, balanced nicely on the R6. Unfortunately, the same is not true of the RF 85mm. It is really top heavy and doesn't balance well on the cameras. It's just too big. But for those of you who enjoy this lens, you'll probably be willing to deal with that. So let's talk about the star aspect of this lens, the image quality. It creates really, really beautiful images. The pictures that come out of this lens are tack sharp. Even at 1.2, you get tack sharp images with incredible fall off. This lens really excels at isolating a subject from their background. It creates really, really dreamy bokeh. It's very impressive. No surprises here. This is an excellent lens for portraiture. Also, like the 50 millimeter I tested a few weeks ago, this lens has almost no chromatic aberration. Canon has done a really fantastic job with improving the optics of this lens. One thing that is a very personal preference of mine is that I don't like 85 millimeters as a focal length very much, so it's not really a fault of this lens. Um, just in general, it's not my favorite focal length. I find that 85 millimeters is a little bit too tight to capture the scenes I want to capture, but it's not tight enough to really reach into a scene when I need that reach. I find that it's a focal length. I just don't really know what to do with. I know people love using it for portraits, but honestly, I'm much more at home using a 50 millimeter. So there's that. As far as autofocus goes, this lens is excellent, especially considering all the glass that is built into it. The autofocus system works extremely well on these Canon R cameras. I've said before that the focusing system is excellent. It improves EF lenses when they're adapted to the R system. And when using a native RF lens like the 85 1.2, the autofocus accuracy is exceptional. I've said before that I typically prefer single point over face tracking, but in the case of the Canon 85, it worked really, really well, and I found myself really enjoying the face and eye tracking feature of the Canon R6. I also used this lens in some video applications while I had it, and it created really beautiful results as I expected. I mean, this lens is a really beautiful lens optically, so obviously it's gonna create some beautiful results for video. Downsides are that it's so big and heavy that it's not really a practical lens for video. There are other lenses out there that might make more sense for you if you're shooting video. Also, 
While focus breathing wasn't an issue for me and my limited testing of this lens, I have heard complaints of focus breathing with this lens, uh, so that is potentially an issue, but I would have to do more testing to see if that's true or not. So all in all, this is a really excellent RF prime lens from Canon. It's a premium lens. It creates really incredible images. So who is it for? Well, I would definitely say this is a lens for portrait photographers. If you are someone who uses the Canon R system, you want the best available 85 millimeter, this is it. Although it's really big and really expensive, if you're looking for a dreamy, optically superb 85 millimeter lens, this is it. The other thing to consider is just practicality of this lens. I know I keep coming back to the size and the weight and the expense of this lens, but just to give you an idea of my experience with the lens, yes, I was able to achieve some incredible images with it while shooting at events for the opera and shooting video, but it just didn't make the most sense to use this lens from a practical perspective. I felt a little uncomfortable having this big and expensive of a lens with me out at these events. It just didn't seem like it made a lot of sense. I think this lens will make more sense in a studio environment than it would on location or at events, but you'll have to decide that for yourself, what you're comfortable with uh, and what your needs are. I can only offer my honest uh, experience and my honest feedback. Recently, I made a poll on YouTube asking you guys if you thought the RF lenses were worth it over the EF lenses, and the vast majority of you said, yes, the RF lenses are worth it. I'm so curious to know why you think that. For me, at least, I just don't see enough benefits of the RF lenses over the EF lenses to upgrade. I do think the RF lenses are in a league of their own in terms of optics, but I still think that the EF lenses are really unique in character and offer something really special, and they work flawlessly on the R cameras. So for now, I am more than content with my EF lenses. Uh, maybe in the future, I'll upgrade to RF, that remains to be seen, but do let me know in the comments why you think the RF lenses are worth it, if you think that. If you are gonna stick with your EF lenses, let me know. I'm genuinely curious. I hope this video has been helpful for you. I hope it's been interesting. I hope you've maybe learned something or been inspired. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, consider subscribing. I'd love to see you in the next video. Say hello down in the comments. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Thank you, thank you as always for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye. Love is